I am joined now by Grace Lynn, the pro-reading activist who delivered a viral speech defending our access to books. She's also a highly esteemed member of the Velshi Band Book Club. Grace, it is an honor to talk to you. You and I have corresponded. You've sent me emails in the past, but to actually uh, speak to you in person is a, is a big deal for us. Thank you for, for being with us this morning. It's a big deal for me to talk to you. And Let's... I know... Um, Thank you for all the things that you do, Ali. Thank you, Go Grace. Ahead. Let's start with the quilt. Uh, you included a, a number of titles on the quilt, uh, a lot of beautiful detail. What inspired you to do that? Seeing the different things that came up about the start of banned books and targeting them. We hear it a lot. I have friends who did the research for me. Michael and Claire Pinella researched online the books that were banned. I did the digitizing on the computer, and then those were sent over to my computerized sewing machine, and I uh, executed the color and so on, and chose various things, for instance, the uh, flag, as you see uh, there, that denotes our wonderful people of the GLBTQ community and many others, as you can see, are uh, there. Um, and there are so many more that could never fit in them in the, on one little quilt. But many of the people that saw it were very excited about it. You know, the main thing is if you bury history, you're going to have to repeat history again. Don't you think that is true, Alex? Well, you, th this is the compelling part about your speech is that you, you've lived that history. You, when you, um, I knew from your correspondence with me that you were very committed to this, but then you brought up your husband. Who, who died, I believe, at the age of 27 uh, years old in, in action in World War II, fighting for liberties that we appreciate today. You, you really understand, when you say we're, we're destined to repeat it, you brought up Nazi book burning. You, you're, you're saying that this path that we are on does ultimately erode democracy. This isn't just about whether you think people should be reading these particular books. You almost implied, read them if you want, don't read them if you don't want, but you can't stop people from being able to access books. That is true. And I uh, repeat that every human being is just as important as any other. Our children, who may be a little different from the other children, need to be recognized by their classmates and honored like they are. And that's only one case that I speak about. We need to know that all human beings are just as important as all the other kind, and we should treat them that way. Grace, when we talk about, we talk a lot on this show about democracy and, and the challenges to it. And one of the messages that we have is that people need to get involved. And that starts with voting or registering to vote or helping somebody else register to vote. But one of the things that always comes up is that people should go to their school board meetings and they should participate. At 100 years old, you are demonstrating what citizenship looks like. Your view is not that everybody has to share your view on anything about any of these books. But you show up after all of these years, after losing your husband in World War II, you still think at 100, it's your job to show up and express your views. Indeed, it is. It's important for any of us that can get in the position of helping. And uh, right up in the corner on top is one book I wanted to mention, Fahrenheit 451 a good book to read, if you can get a hold of one, of course, Ben, and many others. Let's talk about um, the, 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 a lot of people who get these books banned or who move to get them banned, 
the argument is maybe they haven't read some of these books. It, it seems to be boilerplate. It seems to be um, a, an attempt to keep your kids away from being exposed to certain things as opposed to looking at it the other way, the empathy, the look at the experience that you'll read about that you didn't actually live. Th that seemed to be the message you were trying to get across to people at that meeting. That is quite true. And of course, we need to express strongly that all school boards should be open in what they're doing. We need more than numbers. We need to know what they're waiting for, what they're voting for or approving or not. The audience needs to know. Grace, people often say to us, uh, you know, in the business, don't you get tired of all the, the stuff you have to report on and, and the, the constant battle? And I guess next time somebody says that to me, I'm going to introduce them to you and say, Grace Lynn's not tired. She's never going to get tired. Thank you so much for being with us, my friend. Grace Lynn, uh, the 100-year-old book band fighter and very esteemed member of the Velshi Band Book Club.